gentle marketers. Welcome to episode 73 of the Gentle Business Revolution podcast, the show where we talk about marketing your business by disrupting the current marketing paradigm and changing it to a gentler approach, one that's based on empathy and kindness. As usual, I'm Sarah Snecroce, I'm your host here, and you know that you're in the right place if you are a heart-centered entrepreneur or change maker who is looking for a different, a better way to market your business. Or you might also be a marketing impact pioneer, so someone who's working for an organization and are curious about different ways to market and communicate with your audience. Today's episode falls under the P of partnership. And if you're a regular here, you know that I'm organizing the conversations around the seven P's of the gentle marketing mandala. And if this is your first time here, uh, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. You may not know what I'm talking about, but you can download your one-page marketing plan with the gentle marketing version of the seven P's of marketing at sarasanacroce.com forward slash one page. So it's these seven P's that we're uh, referring to often here on this show, and they're uh, kind of organized in the shape of a mandala. So again, sarasanacroce.com forward slash one page. It comes with seven email prompts to really help you reflect on these seven P's for your marketing. So I have a very beautiful conversation for you today based on the idea of partnering. As I said, the P today is partnership. So based on the idea of partnering with the world. When I met my guest today, Jane Verilo, I immediately knew that I wanted to have her talk to us about her business model that evolves around the 17 Sustainable Development Goals from the UN. And we often talk about these 17 goals. I write about it in the book. We do exercises uh, around that in the gentle business circle. So very um, important for us uh, gentle marketers. So she will share with us how she measures her business's direct impact on these goals. It was, it's just, for me, it was mind blowing to see that uh, an entrepreneur, you know, like all of us can create a business model that is so unique and so different and really uh, start to measure the direct impact that her business has on these uh, 17 sustainable development goals. We'll also talk about impact in general, the shift from me to we, and how us entrepreneurs can create those triple wins, the win for ourselves, win for our clients, and win for the planet. Before we dive in, let me tell you a little bit about Jane. So Jane Warlow is a global speaker, best-selling author, and sought-after business-slash-executive coach. She's the founder of two companies, Sacred Changemakers, bringing together people who want to make a meaningful difference in our world and equipping them with the knowledge and skills they need to make a greater impact in the world using the SDGs, so those are the Sustainable Development Goals, and her other business is Coaches Business School, a training company that helps coaches to succeed by building a conscious business. She's one of the world's most ex- exclusive business coaches, and her clients are by invitation and referral only. Jane has worked with CEOs and senior executive teams around the world, and despite working with millionaires and celebrities, her true passion is inspiring change makers to become and do their sacred work in life and business. Her clients are passionate and purpose-driven with a track record of success, individuals looking to raise their consciousness to play even bigger and make a meaningful difference in our world. Born and raised in England, she has worked with leading organizations and individuals in the US, Europe, Asia, Australia, and Latin America. Jane now lives and works out of Columbus, Ohio. All right, so without further ado, let's talk to Jane. Good morning, Jane. How are you? Oh, I'm really good, Sarah. I'm thrilled to be talking to you today. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, likewise. It's been a few months in coming. And so I was like, oh, today is the day I get to talk to Jane. It's a good day. Thank you. Yeah. We were just 
discussing offline again how I came across your idea or your framework that that's really what inspired me so much to have you on the show because I've talked about the 17 sustainable business sorry 17 sustainable goals here on the uh, show before and so when I saw that you used that framework as a kind of a business model I was like oh, this is interesting. I need to talk to Jay. <laughs> and so we'll get into that. But maybe before we do, I, I would really like you to kind of tell us a bit the story behind your, what do you call it? Do you call it a business, the Sacred Change Makers, or do you call it a mission? How do you refer to it? Yeah, it's kind of, well, I suppose the cliche word is a movement, but mm -hmm. it's interesting because, and it's something of an experiment as well, yeah. <laughs> if I'm honest. It really is an experiment in, in creating a different kind of business model and just really, you know, kind of experimenting and almost so I am going to say playing with it because mm -hmm. that's kind of the energy that comes with Sacred Changemaker. So yeah, it's very much a project at the moment and one that we're experimenting in different areas with and getting some great results actually in, in some areas and, and really, you know, attuning to what people really want, I think is the, is the clear way of deciding. So it started as an idea and then people started to gather around it. And, and it really is about kind of building the bridges from the changes that say, for example, I work as a, as an, an executive and business coach and a, and a business mentor and people come to me, I realize for the things that they want in their life or their leadership or their business, they come for an individual reason, which is like, I think of that as the me reason for doing anything in the world. And, and the reason most entrepreneurs start their businesses is because they want financial security. Right. Usually our, what we do in the world starts with a me reason. But I think now, probably more than ever before, I think that's far too limited a view of change. And, and I've been in the change industry now for, gosh, 30 years. And I look at that and I think, gosh, I've always, like always focused with my clients on the me space. And now I think we need to be broadening that out and asking not only what do you want as my client, but what does the world need from you? So this we space. So at Sacred Changemakers, we're really being very bold about this, this idea that change needs to change. It needs to expand and shift from the me to the we space. Mm, I love that. And, and, and yeah, I'm so much aligned with that. I talk about the triple win. So also, you know, the first win is for ourselves. The second win is for our clients. And then the third win is, is for our planet. So, yeah. so important. And, and yes, maybe, you know, it, it should have always been a triple win, but now, <laughs> like you say, more than ever, our, I think we're awakening to this importance and I'm yeah. so glad we are. And I'm so glad to see, you know, yeah, movements like yours. And, and you're so right. You talk about bridge making, maybe, ex <laughs> yeah, explain a bit more why we need, you know, someone like you uh, uh, there to kind of accompany us from one side of the bridge to the other. Yeah, I think, well, I mean, the historical context of, of the culture we live in in the West has been very individually oriented, you mm -hmm. know, and I think that's, that's something that's really endemic for most of us in our lives. We've, you know, and I, I can't speak for everyone, but I, I can speak for myself. I grew up in England and, you know, in many ways, I grew up in poverty in England, but still I'm, I'm recognizing more and more, it was still a very privileged position for me to be white and growing up in a in a, a small town in a in a country that you know had had many aspects of life that I would say we you know England back in the 60s 70s was capitalism still is capitalistic mm -hmm. but I didn't really understand what capitalism meant until I came to live in the US. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and this is like capitalism on steroids, really. And so I didn't even realize I lived in what the Americans would call a socialist country. 
<laughs> I, I, I just had no sense of that until I came to live in America where it really is dog eat dog. And, you know, if, if things go badly for you, there's not a lot of like social systems that can help or support or catch you mm -hmm. if you have a, a problem in your life. Whereas in the UK, I'd say there's a lot more, there's a lot more community uh, and, and government support that can that can help people when when life kind of you know goes goes down goes the wrong way, mm. and so I think a lot of us are brought up to believe that if I there's a saying that my mother said she used to say Jane if you want something doing do it yourself, <laughs> and in some ways that that kind of epitomizes America for me like you know, it's everything's your responsibility. It's down to you as an individual. If you want something, you make it happen. If it doesn't happen for you, oh, sorry, but you know, it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And so everyone's, there's a lot of, I, I experience a lot of underlying fear in this mm -hmm. culture. And what that means is everybody's hustling here. They're hustling because they have to. Mm -hmm. They're hustling because it's about their survival at the end of the day, you know, and the gap, as, as the media talks about, the gap between the, the poor and the, and the incredibly rich is incredibly wide here. And, and that's also true. And money is the currency of everything. Now, I know money makes the world go round, but here in America, money truly is what, what buys you anything from influence to being able to manipulate people's views on Facebook, you know, whatever it is, it's, it's all down to money at the end. And, and even we now know that politicians are being bought everything. So I think coming from that context, I think a lot of us realize if we want to create financial security for our families and for our lives, then it's down to us. We have to make it happen. And that brings in with it a lot of worries, a lot of anxieties, a lot of need to work really hard all the time, you know. And, and I think that is really what what makes us so me oriented in the world. And, and there's good reasons for it. You know, it's not to blame any of us, including myself. The reason I went into business was for financial security for myself and my family. And I think that's true for so many of us. But then when I think if that's the only place I focus my energy, then we end up in a world like we have today, mm. you know, and, and, and with, you know, financial markets crashing, you know, we've got economies now that are maturing and markets that are maturing and things are being polarized. And I think we need to move from this ex these extractive practices we've had for the from the planet of thinking we can dominate because we don't dominate. We live in a an ecosystem. In fact, every single human listening to this is a bioenergetic system in themselves. So this systemic perspective is something I learned about a long time ago in, you know, leadership and organizational development studies. But now I, I have a sense of it, like a lived, felt, visceral sense of it. These interconnections between us all in a way that I think has grown over the decades and realizing that if we continue to ignore the fact that we live within a system, we don't dominate the system because when we do, bad things happen then if we can learn to live in resonance with the world, with other people, with nature, I can't think of a better goal to have for my life, for a business, for our world. I just can't. Mm. So that's what's pulling me is let's expand our minds here. Let's expand our belief set. Let's realize and awaken to the reality that we live in. And it's, it's kind of shocking in a way when I look at the reality of where we are today and how we've got here to think that we actually did this willingly and in some cases also consciously. So how, how do we get there? Where, you know, where is that, that bridge and how are we going to get across that bridge? Because especially right now, you know, after the year that, we all went through, uh, I guess, financial security is, is the number one topic on a lot of people's minds. And, and, and so first they want to, you know, make sure that 
they are secure. And, and then, you know, maybe after, if there's any leftover, we can take care of the planet. But, but you know, obviously, if we're in a place where we're already financially secure, we're like, okay, now is the time that we need to talk about us as a collective. But what I'm curious about is, is like, how do you lead people over that bridge if they're still on the other end, on the other side, where they're not financially secure and they are really struggling about survival and, and those kind of questions? Yeah. And and I think that was why there was a need for me to experiment with some different business models, because you've just spoken there to something that underlies, it's like an underlying assumption underneath sacred change makers, which is that right now we we need to build a bridge between me and we and we can't ignore the we and if you look out at the market we've got a polarized market we've got for profit businesses and then we've got not for profit businesses at the other extreme mm -hmm. and in the middle we've got a few things that are attempting a few new models like the B Corp that are attempting to kind of take the middle way here. And I did look at the B Corp, but it didn't go far enough for me. There's another model that's emerging in Europe, actually. So you may be aware of it, Sarah, but it's not really made its way in any significant way to the US yet. But it's the fair shares model of doing business, which is really about making sure that everyone who is part of the business shares in in you know the the responsibility plus the the profitability if you like of the business mm -hmm. so that's another model that I'm kind of playing with a little bit but I'm playing with it not with the whole business but with the with projects to kind of test out what's working but the first thing I want to say really from your question is when you say how do we the the first very simple answer is we already are And there's a growing movement of people that are focusing their attention on this wider perspective. And it's becoming a growing conversation in different media channels as well that I know you're aware of, Sarah, because we've talked about this. And so it's, it's not that we're waiting for anything because we're already active in this space. And then What it, what it really means to me, the Sacred Changemakers experiment, if you like, was to, to just kind of see what's possible. Because you're right, in this world, like, and this is true for me too, I have to take care of my own cost base before I can, in a way, I guess, start to look to be philanthropic in the world. And that's kind of the older mindset of which I, I started Sacred Changemakers with. Now, in the experiment of Sacred Changemakers, what I decided to do was to work out if I could do that differently. So is it possible to take care of my needs and make a direct impact at the same time? <laughs> And that's what Sacred Changemakers is all about because I've two businesses, as you know, Coaches Business School teaches coaches how to bring their business online in a very conscious and, and thoughtful way to make meaningful impacts. And we, we're also integrating some of the impacts into Coaches Business School. But this is a way to help all those coaches in the world, if you like, that are not making any money from their coaching. And this is why this is so important to me, because I believe coaches can be the the facilitators, if you like, of the new evolution of humanity. Now, I know that sounds grand, but coaches are in all aspects of society at all different levels. We work with from like CEOs of global corporations down to, you know, kids that are from divorced families, for example, or, you know, we're kind of throughout all different pockets of society. We work with parents, we work with entrepreneurs, we work with, you know, people in their life or in their, in their sacred path or their spiritual path, or we're all over. So I think if anybody's, and, and coaching for me remains one of the skills that I believe is the most transformational for any human to go through. And so when I look at that and I think, okay, if, if I could just help a few coaches get their businesses and become profitable, then they're going to more likely look to make a difference in the world. But sacred change makers 
has really turned that upside down and is saying, okay, if you want to make a difference, why not make a difference for yourself and for all of us at the same time? <laughs> I love that. Yeah. It, it's <laughs> that, that so resonates with me and it reminds me of an email I just uh, wrote that talks about this both and and not either or yeah. anymore. And I refer also to, you know, the the business we used to have non-for-profit or for-profit uh, or, or, you know, it was, it was a win for us or the client. Like it was always either or. And, and now what we really want is both and, and, and you explained that so beautifully. <laughs> you need to first take care of yourself, the, the typical oxygen mask reference, you know, you need to right. first put it on yourself and then you can help others. And, and I, I agree that coaches, another email that I just received today actually was talking about coaches and how and this person that sent it, I really, I really trust her and I really look up to her because she was saying we need to up level our coaches as well, right? If yeah. if if the coaches are still on the other side of the bridge and all they're talking about is, you know, here are 10 tips on how to become a millionaire or, or you know, <laughs> those kind of things that we're kind of used to. Well, yeah. that just creates more anxiety. That doesn't help us, you know, move towards the other side of the bridge, so to speak. Right. So I, th I think, yeah, you're doing fantastic work on, on both ends of the bridge, the ones with the coaches who need your uh, kind of your help to say, okay, you can become sustainable yourself, do it in a conscious way, and then, and then you can actually help other people become more co conscious as well. And, and then that's that's where change happens it's w within the collective really yeah yeah so talk to us about this you know the framework that you built this the, the sacred change makers around so the 17 sustain sustainable development goals we talked about those before on this podcast set forth by the united nations but then yeah just talk to us because it's so <laughs> fascinating how you did that Right. So, so, so one of the things you need to know, and so I'll just out myself here is that sacred change makers came from, so I, I channel spirit and sacred change makers. I've been doing this now for about three decades. Sacred change makers came through in a, a meditation with something called the sacred invitation. And this happened about 18 months ago now. And when this message came through, it's like an ancient story. And mm -hmm. it's like nothing I'd ever channeled before in my entire life. And and, and I, I thought at first I was asking when, when this came through to me, I was asking about how, like my own purpose, my calling in life. Like mm -hmm. I'd got to a stage in my life where I was like, okay, I'm ready for my legacy work now. What, what is it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of and, and this was what came through. And at first I thought it was just for me. And then I realized, no, this was absolutely meant to be shared. And this was the origin really for Sacred Change Makers because one thing I want people to know is I'm 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 building this in a very emergent way with spirit. And what that means is they're they're kind of leading and I'm kind of following. Now, one of the messages, the reason I'm telling you this in response to your question is one of the messages I kept getting was it's not enough to just teach coaches and, and change makers how to. You always, they also have to be making a direct impact, right? Mm -hmm. So they have to, they can't just, you can't just teach the solution. You have to be the solution. And I kept getting this mantra, don't just teach the solution, be the solution. And I thought, what the hell does that mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then I started doing research. And of course, I was aware of the UN Sustainable Development Goals framework because a, a few of my corporate clients have got that in their corporate social responsibility and their corporate sustainability departments. And, you know, and I knew about it. And I know that it's the framework that some of the smartest, most intelligent people on our planet have put together. And, you know, for us to look at what does the world need now? Well, this is the answer. 
the mm-hmm. 17, you know, sustainable development goals are our best guess at what uh, the world needs now. So I kind of had that in the back of my mind and I was like, okay, how do we align to this? So I'm on all the United Nations websites. I got in touch with a few people, had some conversations and, you know, I could learn about it, but it wasn't easy to to work out the gap between my business or my movement and what the United Nations was up to. Mm. It, it was kind of hard to align myself in a way that felt meaningful. And then the other thing I know from working such a long time in, <laughs> in the human change is that we need, a bit like the Dyson vacuum cleaner, we need to be able to see visible results from from what we're doing. And so I knew that that was another component part that I wanted here. I wanted to be able to, and then we've got brands like Tom's, you know, that are doing the buy one, give one. And I thought, okay, maybe I can do the buy one, give one. So when somebody buys something from me, then automatically a portion of that money goes into a donation, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where I started but it was all getting administratively very difficult, very fast and very complex, very fast. And I couldn't really find my way through. And so I'm doing lots of research and I knew what I wanted. I knew I wanted an integrated model. And so I said to Spirit, okay, you're going to have to help me here because I can't find it. And the next day I was introduced to a company out of Singapore called B1G1. They literally came into my inbox. And I, to this day, I don't know how. Nobody referred them to me. They didn't have my email address. They don't know how the email got to me, but I got this email. So I looked them up and they're this incredible company. Now, when I joined them, which was only 18 months, two years ago, they've got this great model where, and we'll put the notes in the the link in the show notes for people because it is phenomenal. And what it means is they do micro giving, right, around the world. There are a number of, I think they've got like about 2,000 projects now that they're supporting around the world with impacts. And they've set up this amazing membership where I pay a membership fee every month to be in B1G1. That covers their entire running costs. So I pay to be a member of, of B1G1. And then I get access to all the projects that they're doing. And I can select projects that align with my business and the work that I'm doing in the world. And I can align even products or programs with these so that every time somebody buys something from me, then impacts happen. And literally, I just collate up what we've sold in a certain program product every month. And then my assistant will then go in, she'll make all the donations, and then everything will come up on our impacts page, which actually B1G, it's just a widget from B1G1, they actually give you the full transparency so anybody can see where you're up to. And they also link whatever charitable giving that you're doing. They also show, they link it for us to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal that it supports. So now you can go on our website to our impact page, because this is one of the core reasons why we do what we do, so that every time we do anything now in our business, It's all aligned to B1G1 to the extent that, and I know we've got COVID at the moment, I've even got things like when I fly to a conference or when I fly anywhere, I offset the carbon emissions by planting trees through B1G1 in in the Amazon rainforest. So all the time now, I'm making sure that, first of all, as an individual in the world, I am carbon neutral. I'm doing everything I can from composting to using minimal plastic and all these different things so that I'm living like what I would call a a global citizen or a sacred change maker in my own life. Then that moves to my business so that, you know, we're taking care of everything here. And we just ran, I just did another experiment for new year. We ran a, a, I ran a 
like a, a mini workshop for people and a hundred percent of the proceeds went to, to the impacts. So we did it, we put it together. So I put together a peace on earth bundle for the holiday season. And then I, I taught people in this me, we way, um, all about reviewing last year, getting your vision together and your strategy together for the new year. And so, but we did this in a way that the whole proceeds, they could pay what they wanted to attend. So I wanted to have a look at how that worked. But also I was surprised that there was three price points and people still paid the the most expensive price point. So we made 8,000, and this is off the top of my head, 8,450 impacts just by running this one thing, which meant incredible things like we've given something like 6,000 villages in India, I think it was, we've given water to for the whole of the year. We've given three villages in Kenya healthcare, critical healthcare. So they get two doctors, a nurse practitioner and two nurses to go in and set up a clinic for six months in in three villages. And so all these amazing things that we've done And at the same time, these individuals have got their own needs met. They've reviewed last year. We did this workshop where we all got together and we collaborated and we looked at what was possible for the individuals and also for the world in this expanded conversation. And they got their needs met as well. So we managed to do both, which for me is like changing everything now because it's like, okay, what are we going to be doing this year on this line? Because this works. This is wonderful. Yeah, this is so amazing. Just one follow-up question. When you mention your business, so, you know, we, you, every the income from the business, I yeah. assume that for now that's your coaching uh, the school business that then kind of gives back to the sacred change makers. Yes. For now, yes. right? For so, now. so, yes. So for now, so at the moment, there's not in, or there hasn't been enough money running through sacred change makers to make it sustainable. So it's been a huge cost base. Right. So let me be honest about that. It's been a huge cost base, which I've been financing personally for its first year. Now in year two, I'm moving Coaches Business School as the main sponsor underneath it so that Coaches Business School will get some like kind of value from being the sponsor for coach for sacred change makers but the goal is to make it so that it's so that it covers its own costs right but right now we haven't, I haven't got anything because it's really a podcast and a community. And at the moment, the community is free. So I haven't put in place any real income streams yet because what I did last year didn't work mainly, I think, because COVID hit at the same time. <laughs> so everybody went into survival mode and Sacred Changemakers was kind of positioned a bit like a not-for-profit. So I now need to work out if I if I need to make it a not-for-profit or whether it can, because at the moment it's a business. So I need to start to put in place some income streams. And now I have a sense after this experiment we did over the new year, what will work. So we'll probably be going to be doing events every month, which will cover its costs. So as soon as I can get its costs covered, and that includes impacts that are already embedded, remember, then we can start looking at, okay, now what? <laughs> I love your, you know, you sharing the the real story behind it and in, in, in full transparency because it it is so important. I think for for entrepreneurs and and us conscious, heart centered, you know, entrepreneurs to understand that this this is a slow transition sometimes mm. as well. I talk about a slow transition to gentle marketing. It's the same here. It's like. You know, obviously, yes, if you really needed to, you could make a buck, you know, tomorrow with this. Right. That's not the goal here. That's, it's a long-term sustainable goal. And, and that takes some tweaking and seeing what works and what doesn't and slowly then transitioning into this both and new. It's, it's completely new, this business model. So obviously, yeah. it takes some time to get there. Yeah. Having said that, though, if you have an existing business model like Coach's Business School, you can integrate it immediately. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so you know, from that perspective. And the other thing that I think is really exciting about our times, and we talked a little bit about this, Sarah, you brought it up when we were talking before we started recording, which is that the time that we're in right now, I think, is so exciting. And I say that because 
our marketplace, our, our consumers, no matter what business we're in right now, I think this is true across the board, people are waking up. People mm. don't want to just work with businesses now that give them what they need. They want to know that brands and businesses are tethered to a purpose, to something bigger than them. Right. And this is this is now becoming way more visible in the data that's being collected, you know, in different economies around the world is like consumers, our clients, our customers are actively looking for people who are making a meaningful difference in our world. And so I think very quickly, and I, I suspect this year is going to be one of those inflection points where it's going to make a huge difference if your brand is tethered to something more meaningful because that why is important. Yeah, and, and, there, and it's just not the time anymore to fake it, right? Any kind of oh, yeah. greenwashing <laughs> or, or any kind of washing. <laughs> you know? And there's that a lot of that anymore. Yeah. 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 So true. yeah. 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 And I think that's a, that's a growing need for coaches and consultants and any change makers that are working with large corporate organizations to address is, you know, purpose can no longer just be a branding exercise it has to be a culture change. Mm -hmm. It has to be a process change. Everything needs cleaning up inside so many large corporate organizations. And I think that's like you were saying, this is a slow, it's like trying to, you know, turn the wheel on the Titanic, you know, for some of them, there's a lot of work that we need to do. And the time to start it is now because uh, we're already behind the curve a little bit. Yeah, it, I want to come back on the slow. <laughs> yes, it, it, it's going to be slow, but at the same time, it's going to evolve fast, like yeah. much faster than, you know, whatever we've done getting to this point from now on, things are going to speed up. And so the, even though it might feel slow to us, like yeah. what have, would have taken 10 years back in the days now might take one year. And that right. is slow if you're in the middle of it and you, there's, you know, not no income yet from this new adventure, but it's going to happen fast, much faster than ever before. Yeah. So and I know some, some of my corporate clients are on a 10 year, they're, they're using the decade to actually get to where they need to be in terms of, you know, their supply chain, their the, the everything. emissions, yeah. everything. Yeah. 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 So, so we're already a bit talking about the future of business, but what <laughs> other kind of things do you see going forward? Maybe, you know, something that you've channeled or, or just perception, like where do you see us going? Well, I think that, I mean, I've already mentioned the, 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 I'll call it awakening. Uh, you know, people, I often get asked on, on podcasts like these, like, what, well, what's your purpose, Jane? What's your legacy? And I can say in very grand terms, which is my, my purpose, I believe, is just to help raise the consciousness of the world. And, and the reason that's important is because my end goal is to help us all live in resonance. That's it, <laughs> right? Help us all live in resonance. Mm -hmm. And that means with, with each other. Now, We've kind of, I'd say it's almost like a lost art, this with thing, being with. Because if you look at organizational business life, a lot of it's defined by power over or power under, not power with. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that this is one of, I think this is one of our challenges, but it's also one of our opportunities now, is this interrelatedness and realizing that we don't actually live in a physical world. You know, it's way more than what we currently understand. And there's so much that is invisible, that is so core to the way that we live our lives and our, our fulfillment and our happiness, even today. And when I sat down and actually thought about the invisible, uh, I actually did it with a team. Um, I was working with a corporate team. And for some reason, I started saying um, out of my mouth quite intuitively that the invisible parts of business were the most important. And then as a team, we kind of brainstormed what those were. And it was quite surprising to realize that leadership, I mean, leadership has been alive mm. in organizational life for mm. decades, is invisible. Culture is invisible. Even strategy, really, 
<laughs> when it's in action is is kind of invisible. So, and then we start to think of like compassion and empathy and service and love. And, you know, we can go on. Right. All these things lie in the in-between space, in the energy between you and someone or something else that even power lies in that in-between space, that invisible space. So when you start to dig into that and realize that actually there's a lot that is uncertain in our current lives that we are thinking or creating an illusion that we're managing, actually, you know, this last year that, that has thrown up all this uncertainty and kind of pierced the illusion of how we're living our modern lives, it's always been there. It's always, it's not really anything different. It's just accelerated our awareness into the reality of life. And so for me, I think this awareness is going to continue to grow. And as it continues to grow, as our minds expand to embrace a bigger perspective of life, a more quantum perspective, which is where science is going, which is interesting because we, we're very much built, our facts are built on science. And we start to realize that most of our theories and things haven't just been deducted. They've been in flashes of inspiration and intuition that have got us here. <laughs> then we start to value not just the, the left brain logical, but also the right brain intuitive as well. And then we start to bring in the masculine and the feminine energies. And I think we'll, we'll start to be more whole as humans, where we focus our attention, we'll be more balanced, like the indigenous people talk about with the uh, prophecy of the eagle and the condor. That's what they talk about this time. It's the time of the masculine and the feminine coming together so that we can be whole. And I feel that in the future, I feel it's a time of polarities. Like you said, Sarah, the both and coming together. It's a time for embracing wider perspectives. And it's a time for getting really intentional, I believe, on how we truly want to live as humans and who we want to become. And the stakes have never been higher. Um, and I know there's a lot of false news out there, but when you dig into the, the different stories that are running through the media right now, I think it's really important that as individuals, we decide which story quite consciously and intentionally we want to invest our lives in. And for me, I don't want to be in the doom and gloom. You know, I, I want to be in the, the story that we can turn things around as humans. We can live in harmony with the rest of life forms on this planet. And we can not only re kind of uh, restore the damage that we've done, but we can be regenerative in the way that we live our lives too. Sure, it means some huge changes, but it's the only sustainable way to live. So I think this growing awareness is going to be shaping everything in the next 10 years. Even before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that. I think that's a great place to come full circle and <laughs> and yeah you I I named this episode partnering with the world because I mm. place the conversations around the seven P's of gentle marketing and the seventh P stands for partnership and so I think partnering with the world I think you've beautifully explained that here on this episode so thank you so much <laughs> thank you I always ask one last question, and that is, what are you grateful for today or this week, Jane? Oh, my gosh. I am grateful for my, my health. I'm grateful for my family's health. I'm grateful for all the privileges that I have in my life, of which are many, and continue to notice more and more of that, that I have opportunities and access points that other people don't. And I think that's one of the key pieces for me of driving towards a more equitable world. I would love to live in a world that was more equitable and socially just. And that's what gets me out of bed in the morning. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Please let us know again where people can find out more about you and both of your businesses. Yeah, well, sacredchangemakers.com, coachesbusinessschool.com. And of course, I'm on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, all the, all the big platforms. And, and 
more recently on Clubhouse, which I love. <laughs> mm, not there yet. Yes. <laughs> Looking forward to that one too. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks so much for taking the time and sharing this conversation, Jane. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. I thank you so much for the invitation. It's been great. I hope you enjoyed and found this conversation as inspiring as I did. Please check out Jane's Sacred Changemakers website at sacredchangemakers.com or her other business, thecoachingbusinessschool.com. You'll also find the show notes of this episode with further links at sarasinacroce.com forward slash GBR73. Make sure to tune back in on Monday when we'll kick off the International Random Acts of Kindness Week and my official book launch with a daily episode around the topic of kindness in business here on the podcast. I cannot wait. It's going to be so good and so such a great focus around kindness and empathy and compassion. And I think I really... Um, <laughs> going to kind of tap my own shoulder. I, I really feel like I did a great job selecting different people, um, you know, who, who make kindness their priority and who really focus on kindness in business. So I'm really happy to bring you do- those conversations during that special week. And on Wednesday, February 17th, you're kindly invited to join me uh, for the book birthing party where my friend Kat Rose will interview me on the book and you are welcome to ask questions too. So I would absolutely love to see you. Uh, You can sign up in order to get the Zoom link at sarasinacroce.com forward slash party. Just like everything we do here, this will be very casual and interactive, inclusive, and, uh, you know, just a a way to hang out and and have fun and celebrate kindness and empathy and a different way of marketing. In the meantime, let's be the change we want to see in the world. Speak soon.